Welcome back to our intermediate financial accounting class. Over the last few segments, we've been talking about taxes, why they're important, how they hit the financial statements, why there's a difference between gap and tax, and how we reconcile that difference with deferred tax assets and liabilities. We've talked about permanent differences, temporary differences, and about the processes and steps used to reconcile the two. The last topic that we really need to introduce is what we call a net operating loss. This is what happens when our taxable income is negative and the government owes us a tax refund. What do we do with that from a gap perspective? And that's what we're going to jump into right now. The idea is that taxable income is negative and that difference between the taxable income and zero is called a net operating loss. And the government gives us a couple of opportunities to use our net operating loss. We can either get a refund on the taxes we paid in the last two years, or we can offset taxable income for the next 20 years. So as a company, we really have to stop and think about what we want to do with this net operating loss. Are we gonna carry it back or carry it forward? And we have to decide right up front what we're going to do. Once we decide, we're stuck with that decision. So we have to make sure we're comfortable with what's best for the company. The decision should be based on what's going to give us the most cash back or when we need the cash. So if we really need cash now, we're better off getting a carry back and getting my, a tax refund from last year or the last two years so that I can get a tax refund right now and get the, ta the cash that I want. If cash is not as big of an issue for me right now, or if my tax rates I think are going to be higher in the future, then I might want to save that in a well and use it to offset future tax numbers. So it's up to you how you choose to do it, but understanding the fact that these NOLs are beneficial to our company because of the amount of income they allow us to avoid paying taxes on, either past taxes that we get a refund on or future taxes that we don't have to pay on at all, is one of our key concepts. As is the decision, do we go back or forward and what leads us to that decision. So how do we calculate an NOL value? Well, first we decide, do we want to recover taxes paid in the past two years or do we want to carry it forward and offset future taxable income? If our decision is to go back and recover taxes paid in the past two years, then we go back and we use that NOL to cover as much as possible of the income from two years ago. Let's use 2006 as an example. That's the year I got my doctorate. So it's a big year for our family. If in 2006 I had a net operating loss and I decided I wanted to do a carry back, so I wanted to get a refund from previous years, then I would go back first to 2004 and get as much of a refund as possible from 2004. Then if I had any net operating loss left over, it was bigger than my taxable income in 2004, then I would also start offsetting some of the income I paid taxes on in 2005. Now, why do you think we do it that way? Why wouldn't I go to 2005 and then if I had left over, go back to 2004? Usually when I talk about this with my students in class, it takes them a while to think through this whole process. But remember, I can only get a carry back on the previous two years. Back in 2006, I would have had the option to go back to 2004 and then to 2005. Once I get to 2007, I can only go back to 2005. I can't go back to 2004 anymore, which means that if I'm ever going to get a tax break on 2004, I have to do it in 2006 when I got that net operating loss. That's why I typically go back the full two years. Now, if it's a really small net operating loss and you don't think you're going to have any more net operating losses in the future to carry back and your tax rate was much higher in 2005 than it was in 2004 then you might decide to just do one year and that's fine but the most common logic is to say look let's go back as far as we can because i can never go back to that year again once i've decided how much of my previous income i can cover with my net operating loss i take the amount covered from 2004 times the 2004 tax rate. And I use the 2004 year tax rate, not the 2006 tax rate, because I'm getting a refund on what I actually paid. And I actually paid based on the rate in 2004, not the rates I'm paying now in 2006. If I have extra, I can go on to 2005, do the exact same thing using the 2005 rates. 
Now, if I get done with my carry back and I've been able to cover all of my taxable income of 2004 and all of my taxable income for 2005, then I can carry forward what's left of this net operating loss and actually use it to shield the next 20 years, which means I can actually use that 2006 net operating loss to shield income from 2006 to 2026. Now my journal entries for this carry back and this carry forward are just slightly different. I record income tax receivable for anything I use on a carry back. And then I record a credit, a benefit due to loss carry back. If there's a net operating loss carry forward, either because I didn't do a carry back or because I have extra net operating loss that I can carry forward, then I record a deferred tax asset and I credit benefit due to loss carry forward. And for this part, I use the current year's tax rate because I don't know for sure what my tax rate will be in the future. So according to GAAP, my best guess is the rate I'm paying right now. Now, just like all of our other examples, the list of steps is great, but it makes a lot more sense when you do them. So let's go ahead and do an example that'll show how this works. So this is Zoop Incorporated. They occurred a $600,000 net operating loss in year four. So if we're thinking about our table, our taxable income was negative $600,000. Taxable income was 200,000 in year two, 150,000 in year three. Those are the two years we could carry back to if we wanted to. Our tax rate in those years was 35%. Tax rate in year four, 25%. You can see right here that Zoop elects to do a carry back. Why? Well, because I was paying 35% back then. I'm only paying 25% now. So I can get back a lot of money by going backwards and getting that carry back that I wouldn't get if I tried to carry forward at these smaller rates. So Zoop might still decide, you know what, 35% was high, but you know, I know Congress is on the verge of passing a 40% tax rate. Maybe I will save it. So there could be some logic there that even with this high difference, I might wait. But for a lot of companies, a split like this is almost a no-brainer. We are going to do a carry back. And that's our step number one. Step number two is to cover previous income. And please note, highlight, circle it, whatever. Notice that we're not looking at taxable amounts. We're using the net operating loss to cover previous operating profit. And we'll use it if we have a carry forward to cover or shield, let's say, future profit. Not the tax amounts, but the profit itself. And then we figure out what the tax benefit is after we've shielded or recovered the income. So in this case, we're going to start, we have a year four NOL of negative $600,000. Our year two taxable income was $200,000. So if I've got $600,000 in my NOL, $200,000 in taxable income, I can shield all of it and still have 400,000 of remaining NOL. Since I've already taken care of year two, I can also look at year three and it was a little bit lower. It was only 150,000. So you can see there was a decline there, but I still end up with a $250,000 net operating loss that I haven't used yet. Well, now my step three is to multiply by the tax rates. So I shielded this $200,000 worth of income. Tax rate back in year two is 35%. So I can go back and get $70,000 back from the government as a tax refund. Year three also had a 35% tax rate. So not only can I petition for the 70,000, I can also get back another 52,500. And this is going to be my refund. 122,500. And now that I know that number, I get to move on to the best part, which is step four, 
and that's my journal entry for the carry back. My debit income tax receivable, because I'm going to get a check from the government, and I'm going to credit benefit due to NOL carry back. To record NOL carry back. Now this is if we do the journal entry separate from everything else. Often you won't see it like this. What you'll see instead is you'll see it rolled into the normal journal entry for income taxes. So instead of having income tax payable like we did in example two, you'll have income tax receivable. You'll have a deferred tax amount, probably a credit because getting the huge tax break now is going to cost you later when you don't get the tax break. So instead of having a benefit due to NOL carryback, what you get is a reduced income tax expense. So that happens when companies choose to do them as one big entry instead of one entry for their income tax expense and a separate for the NOL carry back. Now step number five is our carry forward. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the NOL times the current tax rate. And if we decided to just do a carry forward, our NOL would be 600,000. And we'd multiply by this year's 25% tax rate. And this would be our deferred tax asset for our carry forward. But we didn't choose to do that. Instead, we chose to go backwards and do a carry back. So we don't have the full 600,000. What we have instead is the remaining 250,000 from our previous table and that comes to 62,500. So again, if you hadn't done a carry back at all, you'd use 150,000 in this journal entry. In our case, we did use some of the NOL, so we only get to use 625. We record a deferred tax asset for 62,500 and then we have a benefit due to NOL carry forward. Record NOL. That wraps up our discussion of the basics of NOLs. When we come back, we'll be talking about what we do in the future when we choose to use an NOL carry forward. And then we'll also start taking a look at what happens if we lose an NOL. And we'll talk about why that might happen and what we do about it when we come back. I'll see you then. Thanks.